Welcome to the data center. Please step on the sticky mats. In the parking garage of the data center. I'm trying to get, uh, oh, sorry for the background, just the car's music. Uh, about to install two new firewalls, rip out the PF Sense units, and uh, yeah, let's, uh, let's go check it out. Oh, bouncy video. <laughs> let's go check it out. Gotta go down to the first floor and check in with security before we can get up to the top and even check in with the data center. <laughs> this guy's chill. <laughs> check this out. This guy has to call upstairs before he even lets me up at the front desk. That's even before I can get to the knock. This guy does his job. Awesome. Continue our journey to the elevators. You hear it two in the morning? Seven. Shit. Seven. Right here. Awesome. Ten floor. There you go, my friend. <laughs> Have a good day, my guy. Hey, I'm here to download more RAM. All right, come on in, right? <laughs> Just a little bit. Let's go down to the eighth floor. They even have a little break room in there for us with Wi-Fi. Which one's it gonna be? Which one? Ha ah. ha! All right. Yep. There we go. So, to get in here, first of all, the red phone. Do you need help? Um, not only do I have to scan, but I have to type in a code. The code is on the back of the badge, but they put it backwards. So I have to type from the fourth number down to the first, which is interesting just so if people see it a little bit of obscurity, but yes, I am intentionally covering it. Welcome to the data center. Please step on the sticky mats. Someone's caged area. Oh, I guess they're adding more racks. Look at all the pretty cables. All right, let's go back to mine. And now we're gonna squish by. Oh, there she is. The absolute cable monster. And this is what I don't like. Our cabinet has a generic key. We could get a cabinet that isn't so generic, but all right. So what are we doing? Tonight, we're already in our maintenance window. We told everyone 9 p.m. to 2 a.m. It's about 9.45, I'm a little bit late to the data center, so whatever. Uh-oh. Drive five failure. Okay. Well, all we gotta do is swap that if we have an extra and let that rebuild. This is why we make monthly checks to the data center. Wonder why I didn't get an email about that. We really need to upgrade these servers anyways. The Drax in these are a bit old. Right, so this 210 has PFSense running on it. Way overkill. Like epically, this thing just sits here idling. Even though we're doing 200 megabits of traffic with somewhere around, I think what? 15, 16, 17 IPSEC tunnels and a bunch of people open VPNing in. Uh, like it's not a heavy load, but for this thing, uh, it's it's literally nothing. It's just breathing and existing and it just Anyways, it only has two network cables coming out of it. So we're gonna get a little bit more redundancy with that um, But uh, we're gonna grab the config from the switch 
update a couple of the ports. We'll uh, turn on switch one. We'll copy the running config into there. Um, that way, if ever we have a problem, we just move the cables right down to uh, the cold spare. And uh, yeah, let's uh, let's go ahead and get started. I really wish I brought my tripod. Our next maintenance window is definitely going to be a cable cleanup. This is ridiculous. I really wish I would have looked at the rack elevations and saw that uh, we don't have a lot of space here. I really don't like where these are going to be snug fit in there. Yeah, I'm, I'm not feeling it. Uh, my other option is just to set them on top of the switch. Can I do two next to each other? Yeah, you know what? I think this is what we might do. Flippity doo da! Wee! If you think you know what's running on that little nook, tell me. Tell me in the comments below. You know what? I like that. There's room for them to breathe. They're right above the switch. We'll use these short jumpers. That's where they're going to live. Let's do this. I changed my mind. They're going to live on top of each other. When, uh, when I went to go start plugging in these cables, it, was, uh, it wasn't going to reach to the port that was all the way over here. These, uh, these two units, because they're running in high availability, need to be able to be plugged in directly to each other with these two cables. Um, besides, the ports over on this side of the switch are the ones that are configured for trunks uh, that most of these cables are going to be connecting into anyways. Um, and if I did have this firewall over here, well, I really only have these two ports and it would be stretching cables across and it wouldn't look good. So even though we have shit for wire management right now, might as well not add to the mess. But, uh, all right, I'm gonna keep plugging these things away and uh, we'll come back. You know what? I have uh, more gray cables than I do these blue ones. So for the high availability, we'll keep the blue. For the land link, we're gonna keep the gray. Those both will be plugged in. And for the DMZ, we're gonna use the DMZ port. Now, where is another gray cable? Oh, gray cable! Where are you? I don't see any in that pile. Oh, I was looking around and the phone wasn't moving. My bad. Maybe we'll take a look. Uh, you know what? Screw it. We're going to have to use a little bit of mismatch colored cables here. The next question then becomes... Oh, I think I'm going to steal these two out of the little nook there. The next question then becomes, do I take my two lines that come directly from the data center systems and plug them straight into the firewall? Or do I continue to leave them into the switch on their own VLANs? Um, these two cables here. And they're each in their own VLAN so that if I need a device or a firewall or a router, whatever, to pop into that connection, I can do so. But if I take both of these lines independently into these firewalls, which can be done, I literally have no other devices that can connect into these. Um, and I'm not 100% sure if I want to do that. Um... Uh, so I'm going to have to think on that for a minute, but I'm going to go ahead and get connected into the switch. We're going to get these ports uh, uh, configured and make sure that they're the right settings before we just go plugging stuff in. Um, and close to the same time when we start plugging this in, we're going to have to uh, disable one of the, the virtualized firewall that's running CARP in this little guy. Um, and then I'm also going to have to start disabling the R210 that's running the primary firewall because then they're going to have conflicts and a whole bunch of other nonsense. Um, so I'm trying to keep downtime to a minimum, even though we have this huge four hour window uh, that we told people just in case. But all right, be back soon. Okay, I've made up my mind. I don't want these cables here. I want them over there. I want to just be able to use shorty little cables instead of big long cables. Uh, so I went down to the car, I got more, and we're going to move these ports over here, move the cables, voila. All right, gentlemen, damage report. It's done. <laughs> oh, it only took about three to four hours. Anyways, uh, a lot of the pre-programming that I did before I even brought these out here uh, saved me probably a couple hours as it is. When I brought them up, plugged them in, I, uh, most of the VPN tunnels came right up, although I forgot to put the static routes in. But uh, they're chooching away. A high availability is working. That's tested. Um, Everything at this point is working. The only thing that I struggled with for 
more than I want to admit is getting our public subnet routed through them. Uh, we have a slash 27 that's behind the firewalls that's for all of our PBX systems. Uh, what it was was that I uh, shamelessly forgot to add the public IP on the WAN side that actually takes the route in. So traffic was going out, but it had no way of coming back in. We also got the drive replaced on this server over here. You can see it's going bananas. Uh, it's rebuilding the array. We have it set for automatic, so if I stick a new drive in, we don't have to log in. Works great because I can also just have the data center hands do it for me too. Other servers are backing up and uh, everything's doing well so far. Yeah, our de next video is definitely going to be this cable cleanup, adding uh, two PowerEdge 8210s and uh, probably decommissioning this guy right over here. Anyways, I will catch you guys later. Thanks for joining. And if you guys have any questions about what we do in this uh, colo here, feel free to ask and maybe I'll make some specific videos about it. Um, definitely going to take some time to make a video that's probably going to be a little bit boring. Just talking about uh, my favorite differences between FortiGate and PFSense when doing something at this kind of scope. Now, obviously, I don't have the kind of scope that the routers down there are doing, but uh, yeah, we uh, you know we have a bunch of different subnets, clients, customers, VPN tunnels. Uh, and, and there's a lot that the Fortinets do great that the PFSense doesn't do well and there's a lot that the PFSense does a lot better in my opinion than the Fortigates do. So anyways, thanks for coming along, thanks for watching. Uh, please click that like and subscribe button and let's hack that YouTube algorithm and I will see you guys later. Cha-cha!